Hello everyone, welcome back to Ambition, a minuet in power. This is Dan, and we are joining Yvette as she has woken up after uh, going to a party and getting her reputation totally thrashed upon by, um, I don't know if she was she was uh, royalty, but she was certainly a noble, got thrashed by Marcel, and then uh, with our pathetic self, we met uh, what was her name? Ah, oh, man. Uh, this was another day. <laughs> uh, we, we met a wealthy widow who took pity on us, and we ended up becoming fast friends, it seems. And this is the morning after. Actually, it says right here, the morning after disaster. You awaken the next morning in a bed that still feels unfamiliar. That's because Yvette just came to this place, and uh, this is literally... Oh, and actually, this is her third day. First day being the day she came. Second day, she went to the dress shop. And then this is the third day. Right? Or is it the fourth day? Because the, the day after she went to the dress shop was the party. But yeah, you can see this place is in disrepair. This discoloration, wallpaper is torn. Even the curtains on the bed are kind of messed up. Yeah, I don't know... What happened with Armand, but, I mean, he's a noble, but it seems that he, there's money issues. In the process of waking up, you start to recall the last night's humiliations and wish that they were merely the product of your fitful dreams. Unable to go back to sleep, you spend some time tossing and turning in bed before finally sitting up. Nothing is going to make last night go away. The only option is deciding what to do next. You feel exhausted, not physically, but in your very soul, like your fate in Paris has already been decided, and that to remain here would be pointless. It would just be the humiliations of last night over and over again. However, stronger than the exhaustion is the simmering rage you feel at the outrageousness of your circumstances, at the injustice of your treatment, and at the thought of going back to your tiny village after finally making it here to Paris. No, you must not go back. You cannot go back. Not while a single candle of your ambition still burns. So, we were brought here out of love. But we're staying here because of ambition. I, 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 don't, I didn't get a sense of that uh, initially, but I guess this is a, um, a sticking point for the story of the game. So I can understand... Uh, it being pushed, but it didn't seem very natural given the options that I had chosen. Or maybe I just misconstrued everything I wrote. <laughs> and I certainly wouldn't rule that out. Camille pops into your room, already dressed and ready for the day. Bonjour, madame, she beams. It looks like you had quite an active night. Is there anything I can get you? Please find a spare pillow and smother me. <laughs> I'm not sure. Do you know how to make a murder look like an accident? Sigh. Some kind of refreshment, please. So, yes, I would feel very upset after such an event. Like, I, I would I would want to go with, like, can we murder somebody, please? But, um, I mean, we did find, uh, man, I'm forgetting her name. Uh something gazelle madam gazelle is that her name yeah we get to meet her and she was cool people so i mean out of disaster something good happened so we'll go with this one just kind of like we'll play it off even though we're burning and seething with anger anger down at the bottom certainly madame what can i get you camille asks with a smile tea please i'll need to keep my wits about me if i'm to regain people's trust of some wine. Numbing the memory of last night will make me less anxious. Yeah, we let's keep our wits about us, and let's make sure that uh, we make the right decisions. Grimmel returns so quickly with the tea that you're certain she made it ahead of time. It's piping hot, fragrant, and not too bitter. You drink the brew in silence, the gears of your mind slowly getting up to speed. The tiredness fades. Your anger does not. You've gained a little credibility. Nice. So, this is overall credibility, but I wonder if we gain some credibility because we're keeping our 
wits about us. And we're at level two exhaustion. Great. You take a few moments to finish your drink in silence and collect your thoughts. Something that keeps coming to mind is all the gossip you've heard during your time at the party. Most of it while idle prattle, but some of it felt scandalous and valuable. Without an inheritance or a job, you'll need to make a, you'll need a way to make some money. Maybe someone would be willing to buy this gossip. Is that a thing people do? Oh, that is absolutely something people do. Although, now, with the age of the internet, people uh, do with the tea, unlike what Yvette just did, instead of drinking it, they spill it. And freely, at that matter. Camille taps her chin thoughtfully. Well, when I was at Le Halles the other day, someone mentioned something about a newspaper with these amazing society pages. I think it was called La Trompette du Boudoupol. Uh, the People's Trumpeter, I guess. That is a place that is now available to visit on the map. They'd have to get their stories from somewhere. Why not you? In fact, I bet you'd be great at that, madame. Merci, Camille. I think I'll just do just that. I've gone from baroness to be to gossip monger. Great. Just great. Let's try to be upbeat. With that, your day begins. Alright. So, uh, we are free today. There is no itinerary on board, so let's go explore and we'll actually go to this place. This is considered what? It's not considered anything on the legend here. So we'll just go to it. A popular, if unscrupulous, newspaper. Spend the day here to sell gossip, manipulate public opinion, and update your knowledge in the political factions in Paris. Ooh. You walk through the city, following Camille's directions. Eventually, you find yourself threading through narrower and narrower streets. The alleys, packed with refuse and the occasional vagrant napping in the shade, feel almost oppressive in their closeness. Yeah, when you get to not-so-nice places, the streets get narrower and crowded. and Yeah, it yeah, because people with money have uh, the ability to buy land. And so those places have much more open because I guess rich people don't like feeling uh, constricted, I guess. Suddenly, the alleys open up into a wider street near a square. You can hear the splashing of a fountain nearby. You finally find the sign for Le Trompette du Perpoule. The paint appears to be fresh, but the office seems awfully small. Well, basically, this is a tabloid, so yeah. Uh, it is a guilty pleasure for some. <laughs> the door is locked, so you give it a knock. Nobody answers. Looking around, you find a hastily written note lodged in the doorframe. It reads, Office temporarily closed. Engaging in emergency fund raising efforts. We apologize for the inconvenience. Management. P.S. Fear not this setback. The light of journalism shall never fade. I think it is quite uh, ironic that they're calling it journalism. Uh, I don't think journalism is really uh, gossip. Gossip is not journalism. Um, it is quite the opposite in my opinion. But hey, what do I know? I'm no journalist. I barely even read the news. It's at that moment you realize the splashing in the fountain is getting louder, accompanied by some of the most inventive profanity you've ever heard. Against your better judgment, you decide to investigate. I bet you the splashing is the person that owns or runs the paper, and they're probably going through a wishing fountain collecting the coins that people have dropped into it. Aha! A reedy voice shouts triumphantly. You come upon a man in grubby finery, up to his knees in the fountain. His shoes have carefully been placed at the water's edge. He does a little jig as he drops a wet coin into a snuff box, which is clutched tightly in his other hand. Yeah, he certainly seems like the kind of guy who is very shady. Uh, I mean, his clothing 
at first glance, you might think, oh, you know, he's in decent clothes. But look, he's like, it's been repaired here. There's stains all over it. Like, stains all over his, uh, I don't know what they call this, like, neckerchief? Like, his vest is, like, in not really done well. One of his buttons is missing. Yeah, he, uh, he, he tries to be in a higher station than he's able to, I think. But, yeah, and also he kind of, I don't know. He just seems to me to scream out, like, I'm not really a good person, but I pretend to be. And I make money off of it. I don't know. Noticing your presence, the man in the fountain turns to you with a nod and smile that attempts to be ingratiating. Bonjour, madame. Are you Pierre, the esteemed editor? <laughs> Are you serious? This is your emergency fundraising. Uh, let's. Since we're trying to. Um, since we're trying to do business with him and trying to sell him info, let's not make fun of him at first glance. Hmm. His smile broadens and the man bows, his manner suddenly as elegant as the finest courtiers of Versailles. Or Versailles. I don't know. How do you guys pronounce that? Uh, I've always heard it in uh, history classes, Versailles. Why, in fact, I am Bon Madame. Bon Dame. My name is Pierre Renaudot. How may I be of service? I have some valuable social information for sale. Oh, if I wanted to sell some gossip, how would that work? I think we're going to go with the tutorial. Oh -ho! A devious smile crosses his face. New to this, are you? Don't worry, it's much easier than you think. This list shows all the pieces of gossip that you have at the moment. Click on one of them. Okay, cheap crown gossip. And... Gossip's value is determined by its tier and its freshness, but it also has an effect. If you peddle, if you peddle influence, I'll take the gossip for free. But if you can use that effect to change the standing of a faction, wait. So, let's see. It's determined by its tier and its freshness. So its freshness is very fresh because we just heard it. But if you pedal influence, it'll take... Oh, okay. If we do the... There's two options we have. We have sell the gossip or we can pedal influence. So we can either sell it and get money or we can give it to him for free. But he will change the... Um, he will change the... Like it says, the standing of a faction in a particular faction. Uh, like, uh, like the church, the crown, the bourgeoisie, the revolution and stuff, we can change their standing based upon the gossip that he puts in his paper. However, right now you need money, so click on the sell gossip button, okay? Yeah, we, we have, like, nothing. And we're gonna, we, I'm sure we're gonna pay Camille and stuff, too. Alright, we're gonna sell it for 30. If you do this, there should be no chance of the public finding out. Okay. When you're ready, click here to leave. You can always come back at a later time. Okay. Well, we've got no other gossip to sell, so that's it. The next day, the 24th. You woke up, oh, you wake up the next morning to a polite knock on your bedroom's door frame. Camille enters, carrying a small armload of letters. Uh, madame, Camille starts, both confused and hesitant. There's a lot of letters for you here. Are they for me or are they for Armand? Um, let's just take a letter and uh, not question her. Because to her, I mean, she's the servant. If they are for Armand, I mean, technically, Yvette being the... Um, the fiance and now the the lady of the house it seems because Armand's not not to be seen anywhere we still haven't even seen the dude let's um let's just help her out i guess i'm not sure if there's any laws against uh opening someone else's letters in the u.s that is a law but i don't know when that law was placed into effect if you open somebody else's mail that came in from the postal service that is considered a federal offense and uh not something you want to do so, but I, I doubt that's a thing here in 
like, you know, really old France. The letter, written in elaborate calligraphy and sealed in a stamped wax, appears to be in an invitation to a party. The other letters cradled in Camille's arms are of a similar type. Why would anyone invite me to a party? Oh great, more chances to be humiliated by someone I don't even know. Well, I don't know that this is going to be the case. I think they might be inviting her to a party um, either to try to curry influence with her, although she's a commoner, but she is engaged to a noble, so there is that. Uh, Marcel, in particular, humiliated Yvette because she had a grudge against Armand. So that was the reasoning for that. So I don't know if Armand has done that to everybody in town. But there's no reason to think that, especially since we have not heard anything about it. If he's if he's been that terrible to everybody in town, you would think Camille may have um, maybe not left her job. I mean, I'm sure finding jobs in particular at this moment is a very difficult thing to do. But maybe she may have insinuated her or maybe it would have affected the way that she... Uh, conducts herself but she seems to be okay so let's just assume that armand was a complete jerk to everybody in town uh -huh. well madame you're a little famous right now camille replies everyone's heard about your run-in with that dreadful party host a few days ago how they preyed upon your honor and spirited away your carriage driver leaving you trapped and alone okay so everybody's heard it because gossip runs quickly around town you don't think that's exactly how it happened, but decide against fretting over the details. Camille starts to talk faster and faster. Then, when all was lost, you were saved by a beautiful stranger who escorted you home in the moonlight night. It's so romantic, no? Oh, the rumors are already running rampant. Why, just in the market the other day, I heard someone say that you've taken a liking to... Camille stops, stares in the space, and blushes. Actually, never mind that. It, never mind what? Yes, let us never mind that. Never mind it again. I don't know what they're referencing here. Huh. It's just rumors from the marketplace, madame. Nothing you should dignify. In any case, this is your chance to meet people in the city who don't hate you or Monsieur Armand. You have received many party invitations. You can now receive party invitations from all over Paris. In fact, I'm sure that anyone who really judges you fairly is going to love you. Oh, that's really nice. Okay, so we can either do the no tutorial or we can do the tutorial. I'm going to do the tutorial. That's all well and good, but how does any of this work? Don't worry, madame. It's quite simple. All right. So, Monsieur Marriott. Request the attendance of Madame Yvette Ducot to his choir recital on March 26. This intimate party is to be very, the very height of cheerful gaiety. You've been invited to several parties. Camille will show you new invitations as you receive them. Choose accept or decline to decide which parties you'll attend or choose close to skip and choose later. Parties take up your whole day, but you can find gossip and advance certain stories there. Okay, so all parties will give you exhaustion. Accepting this today will give you Pry 5 credibility. Ignoring it will cost you credibility. You will receive church gossip. Ooh, interesting. Oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Well, this one is, what, in two days? I think today was the 24th, and then the 29th, March, uh, no, April 3rd. I don't know about this poetry salon, but it looks like they're, well, maybe, I'm not sure about this poetry salon, but these two seem kind of close, but let's, uh, let's accept, I think. Credibility up. Okay, I'll close that one. And Madame Réveillon uh, requests the attendance of Madame Yvette Ducot to her wine tasting on March 29th. This intimate party is to be is sure to be the very height of merry merriment. Thing about this is that you could get drunk. 
Okay, crap, high credibility. Uh, bourgeoisie gossip at this party. We'll accept that. I think we're just gonna accept everything, to be honest. Oh, whoa, these, I guess, happen at the same day. So one is... This one is the opera, and this one is the poetry salon. Okay. So both of these happen both on April 3rd. So, this one is... The Duc de Harcourt uh, requests the attendance of the fascinating Madame Yvette Ducot to this opera gala. This intimate party is sure to be a most spectacular display of generous amusement. So, same stuff. Receive crown gossip. And this one, Madame Bailey requests the attendance of the infamous Madame Yvette Ducot to her poetry salon. This intimate party is sure to be the purest form of effervescent celebration. Same stuff, but uh, receive revolution gossip. Hmm. I think I will accept the opera. And this one got declined automatically. And this one is Monsieur de Launay request the attendance of Madame Yvette Ducot to his military ball. Intimate party is sure to be the very height of merry celebration. And this one received military gossip, so we will accept that. All right, you can select any invitation on the calendar to see more details about it. Descend deciding to attend a party the same day that you receive an invitation gives you a small bonus to credibility. Okay. So, we saw the details. Yeah, it's a few days away, and we have space between each, so uh, that's good, I think. Alright, give me a moment, you guys. I I don't know if you can tell, but uh, my nose is kind of blocked up, so I'm just going to see if I can relieve that a little bit. Alright, thank you for sticking around. I guess uh, at this point, let us explore Paris. Let's see, this one is Choir. This one um, is a church function, or at the very least, is a function where you'll hear about church gossip. So maybe this is one that we want to wear a dress for the church. So let's explore Paris. Oh, look, we've got stuff here. Parc Moncol. This is a special thing here. What's this? Oh, that's the place where we sell. Café Principe, a Hessian doorman, music to your ears, and a fabric shortage. Oh, so we get to choose things to do. I wonder if all of these take up your time. Like, you can only do one a day, I wonder. If it, only, if it does take up a whole day, I wonder if, like, these are more important. Or if these stick around longer. Maybe I'll try one of these first. Uh, let's Maybe let's check into this fabric shortage. Okay, due to a recent fabric shortage, it appears that a certain dressmaker you know might be in need of a favor. A favor that requires a little guile. So we have a chance to influence our credibility. And some money. Alright, so this one... Down by the water, you come across an unusual man of many talents. A chance conversation that may hold the power to subtly alter the future. Mysterious. In this one, a Hessian doorman exploring a more dangerous part of the city carries some risks, but some of the violent types you might meet could also be useful or even employable. Oh, we could ha hire Hansel, the bodyguard. Well, I mean, we could increase our peril, but we can also decrease it, and we can affect how much money we have. Probably hiring Hansel is what uh, lowers your peril and makes you lose money, I'm guessing. But I'm, I'm kind of like taking a passive approach here, so maybe that's not what we do. Created by the infamous libertine Louis-Philippe de Orléans, this rendezvous location is a bustling garden filled with a strange, adventurous, and exotic attractions. And then there's this cafe. 
a coffee house frequented by philosophers, artists, and academics. Get coffee, update your knowledge of the political factions in Paris, and speak your mind. And here... Uh, we've been here... I'm thinking we go to the fabric shortage. We can possibly uh, get some money. So maybe this is what we will do. The streets of Paris are more crowded than usual. You find yourself actively contending for space in the street amongst all the hustle and bustle. Nothing about this day feels sp particularly special and you wonder what brought it all these people out. You feel a finger tapping you on the shoulder. You turn around and find yourself face to face with none other than the dressmaker, Fatima. Mm -hmm. Salut, Yvette. It's always nice to see one of my favorite customers outside my little shop. After a pause, she sighs and says, Is it possible for you to do me a favor? <laughs> she looks exasperated. Holding up a pouch of coins and pointing at a storefront, she says, Can you take this money, go into that dressmaker's shop, and buy something for me? You see, I used to work there around five years or so, but I never got promoted. Idly, she rubs her fingers across her hasma necklace. So I left to start my own place, and the owner wasn't very happy about it. The next words are a mumble. I might have told her the only client she was fit to dress were the devil and the hangman. <laughs> really hated the uh, previous owner there. Either way, I need some spare fabric, and I'm not welcome in that shop anymore. Alright, so we can either emphatically help her. Of course I can help. What do you need, Fatima? We can be unsure. I don't know about this. Are you sure? And... Why give the money at all, then? Can't you get the fabric elsewhere? Uh, questioning her. I think we should just outright help her, I think. Huh. Oh, thank you so much, she says, thrusting the pouch of livres into your hand and detailing out what exactly she needs. Gained a little credibility, and we gave her... We were given a hundred livres in order to buy the stuff. Inside, you're cheerily greeted by a woman at the counter. Bonjour, madame, and welcome to our humble establishment. The statement downplays the reality that this place isn't humble in f at, at all. In fact, it's utterly magnificent. That's kind of funny, like, these, like, very opulent places. It's like, oh, my little humble abode. It's not humble if it's, like, ostentatious, you guys. You also get the feeling that there's nothing here you can afford outside of the bolts of raw fabric you've been here sent here to purchase. Is there anything I can help you with? Yes, I am looking for a few bolts of fabric. Can you help me? And your co-worker told me I could acquire spare fabric here quite affordably. Is that true? <laughs> so uh, this has a credibility check. Easy credibility challenge. Or we could just like not and just use money. Choice, choice will cost money. So if we do the credibility check here, perhaps we could get a better deal maybe and save some of the money that we got here. Hmm. But then maybe we out Fatima or we just outright use this, use the money here. I mean, we have decent credibility right now. I wonder if we could do this. Let's give it a try. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? Hmm. You detail Fatima's order to the saleswoman and can continue to play up the imaginary discount that you were promised by an equally imaginary co-worker of hers. She really said that? The saleswoman asked, looking behind the counter, looking for some kind of note to that effect. <sighs> After finding nothing behind her desk, she squints accusingly at you. Nice try, but we're a little more careful than that. The D-bag, but no sugar. It's 100 flat. Ah, uh, we lost com credibility. Still, you make the payment and she suddenly, oh, sullenly wraps up your order. You paid the 100 that we were given. Order in hand, you step outside with an armload of high quality fabrics. Oh, thank you so much. This is exactly what I needed. We gained a little bit of the credibility back up, but not. I don't think as much as we had uh, had lost. So I guess we need quite a bit more credibility. It said it was an easy credibility check, man. 
Uh, we're going to lose 10 credibility because of our exhaustion level here. The two of you make some small talk before you part ways. She has a lot of work to do, and you decide to explore the city a little more before heading home. Okay, so I guess... Oh, we only get to do one! Okay, 25th. The next morning, you wake up from a long night's rest, feeling pretty much the same as you did last night. Now that you think about it, you've been feeling tired since that terrible fart party a few nights ago. Farty. <laughs> I was about to say farty. So, bed rest. Camille enters the room, carrying some breakfast. Bonjour, madame. You look unwell. Nicely spotted, Camille. I also feel unwell. Nonsense. I feel fine. It's a little rude to just say it out loud, but you're right. You know, she's been trying her best. I think we should... Co we should maybe, maybe... This isn't a compliment, I think. But at least acknowledge that she uh, did a good enough job to notice that we were tired. Well, don't worry. This sort of thing used to happen to Monsieur Armand all the time. He would attend all of these parties and then forget that sometimes he needed to rest. Armand was always the sort of person who'd burn the candle at both ends. In fact, you were both often guilty of this, which is one of the reasons the two of you got along together so well. The more parties he attended, the more exhausted he was, which made things harder and harder for him. Remember, madame, instead of spending the day outside, you can always rest at home for a day to recover your strength. There's nothing wrong with taking a break every now and then. Home is now available on the Paris map. Do you think you'll be staying in tonight, madame? I think we should. Losing 10 credibility right off the bat is probably going to be tough. Uh, I mean, there's other things that we could do as well, but I don't know that that's what we want to do right now. And excuse me another sec. Sorry about that. I think perhaps I need a little rest too. Uh, when my nose gets blocked up like that, usually it's because I didn't get enough rest the night before. So maybe I will do that after this session. Just like I'm going to have Yvette do. Wee oui, wee, oui, madame, she replies. All right, so we're going to explore out. Ah, oh, man, but it would be nice to get some more stuff here. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to stay home tonight. Yeah, because we lose less credibility with less exhaustion. Um, and that might be important. I think we should build our credibility up so we can s start taking advantage of it. So let's do that. We'll stay home. You decide to take the day off and spend some time at home resting and recuperating. After spending the day in, taking care of yourself, and doing some light reading, you finally feel recharged. The exhaustion that had been affecting you before has passed. You no longer have any levels of exhaustion. With that complete, you turn your focus upon the matters that demand your attention. Okay. March 26th. Oh, it's the day of the party. We didn't buy any new gowns or anything. So we have this. This one is good for military. We will not use this dress. Uh, this one affects the crown because it's uh, we haven't used it. And also it affects church. Yeah, it's not nice for the bourgeois because uh, it's not very fancy, I guess. All right, so let's go to this party. As your carriage nears the party, you consider taking one last moment to assess your preparations. Alright. You pause to consider how well rested you feel. You neither feel you're neither well rested nor exhausted. Nothing is holding you back from doing your best in this game of wits. You check a tiny mirror to keep you keep in the carriage to see that you're wearing your provincial dress. And the guests approve your outfit and your credibility has increased. With preparations like this, tonight should be a largely positive affair. So, by assessing ourselves, we gained the credibility from the plus, um, the plus amount from our dress. So maybe this is something that you need to do prior. You step down out of your carriage and hear the ripple of whispers that signal your arrival to any social event these days. There's a small line in the entryway of the cathedral as guests are waiting to get in. While you're standing in this line, you manage to overhear an interesting rumor. You make a mental note of it, 
just in case. You've gained a piece of cheap church gossip. Huh. A servant checks your invitation and nothing seems to be in oh, and everything seems to be in order. Nod to her and enter the party or please take this gift of wine along with my compliments to our host. Uh let's just nod and enter. I don't think we want to I don't I don't really care whether or not I improve my standing with the church in particular. So we're just huh. gonna move in. She curtsies to you as you pass her by and enter the party. Now, let the games begin. All right, so we have several conversations that we can get into here. This guy and this guy look exactly the same. <laughs> All right, so there's a woman here who apparently used to work with Pierre in the past. As a fellow huntress of gossip and rumors, the two of you might have quite a lot to talk about. So we could get shocking church gossip, we could get cheap church gossip, or we could get outrageous church gossip. And then normal credibility and peril ratings. This one will give us forgiveness is divine. A jilted gentleman has sought out your company and he's quite the grudge to settle. However, firmly held grudges often lead to loose tongues. So we could get similar gossip as well as the same rewards. And this one, also the same rewards. Oh, there's a lot more chance of rewards here for the gossip, but the same credibility and peril ratings. This is indulgence. You find yourself speaking with a woman who could tell you of some gossip concerning the church. All you have to do is deflect the tiresome loviating of a particularly boastful church patron. And there's this one. Why is there a woman here who looks so much like you? Madame Mirror. All right, I think I want to go with this one that seems to be pretty uh, oh, lucrative. So let's go to this conversation. Your latest conversation is taking place in a rather gaudy chapel, separated from the rest of the guests. Ba bathed in the light of a few votive candles, you're speaking with a woman who apparently knows quite a bit about the party's host. Any gossip you manage to obtain from her would clearly concern the church. Even if it's on the cheaper side, that's still valuable. Ooh. Suddenly, a man approaches the two of you, speaking at a jarringly loud volume. Good afternoon, madams. <laughs> I see you two fine ladies are enjoying the chapel that I donated the funds for. Quite a lovely piece of architecture, isn't it? I've often felt that piety is best expressed with marble and gilt. Uh, not gilt like G-U-I-L-T, apparently. It's gilt G-I-L-T. I don't know what the difference is. That's not a word I'm familiar with, but obviously he is, uh, he is talking himself up for being how rich he is. Hmm. Ah, well, that's quite generous of you, she replies, taken aback by his sudden appearance in your conversation. Swollen with pride, you see him inhaling, preparing for what will be a flood of words. So this, this one here requires a medium credibility challenge. Let's not take that one. The small ones we've been losing out on. Uh, or we could be rude to him and incur some uh, peril, or we can just let him talk. I think I'm going to let him talk. He could spill some beans here. Hmm. Not wanting to cause a scene, you sit back and allow this interloper to flood the both of you with a deluge of his irrelevant stories about how important he is to the local parish. Clearly, he was never told that humility was a virtue or that silence was golden. Admitting defeat like, the, like this avoids conflict, but it's also demoralizing in its own way. You have lost a little credibility, but we've lost a little peril as well. However, you quickly realize that there's no end to his self-aggrandizement, so sensing the first opening in his words, you leave as fast as your feet can carry you. So she was the one that had the church gossip. Okay. I think I made the wrong decision there. We lost credibility for it, which sucks bad. All right. So in Author Intrigues, you're, so, you're approached by a woman who's playing a most unusual game with the host. This strange game must be conducted in secret, but is also uniquely suited to your sorts of talents. 
Ooh, you could get shocking bourgeoisie gossip. And there's a possibility to lose or make money from this. This one. Swords and crosses. Two men have sequestered themselves in a chapel to discuss a set of rumors so dire that they fear to speak them aloud. While together they are resolute, they may prove easy to tempt when separated. And there's a lot more gossip here. We've got a chance for favor with uh, the church, it looks like. Get some cheap gossip from the military. Got favor with Alex. Yeah. So, forgiveness is divine. A jilted gentleman has sought out your company. Oh, it's the same guy. Possible gossip. And this one, Madame Mirror. Uh, since these two came back, I wonder if they're, like, important to some degree. But this one seems like it would be good. Shocking gossip sounds pretty good there. But this one, there's also shocking church gossip as well. But I wonder if this one is more difficult to obtain. And it says that, like, when they're separated, so we probably have to, like, finesse a conversation and then choose between either the military person or the church person, perhaps. And there's these two people I've not met yet, so I don't know that I really care. I do think getting more money is probably a good thing, so maybe this one is the one to go with. This one over here, the forgiveness, there's, there's some gossip. I mean, there's a chance for outrageous gossip. Hmm. But what is this grudge that he's got to settle? And with you in mind, or us in mind, I don't, I don't know. I wonder if this requires a credibility challenge. There's no chance to gain credibility, only to lose credibility. This one has a great chance to lose the credibility. <laughs> uh, jeez. Uh, I don't know. Um, this one here seems interesting. The author of Intrigue. It says that is a most unusual game, but suited to our sorts of talent. So I'm intrigued by that. So let's go with this one. While you're taking a moment to compose yourself in the vestibule, you notice someone approaching you. Judging from the way she's glancing around the party, it looks like she's searching for something. Huh. Excusez-moi, but I'm playing a game of sorts. Someone has placed a small pewter statue of a dragon here, and I'm hoping to find it. Her accent is foreign, but you can't place it. Somewhere to the east? Have you managed to see anything like that? I haven't seen it yet, but sounds like the hunt is on. May I join you? Or, no I have not. Best of luck to you, I suppose. Or, you're searching for a statue in the middle of the party. An odd game, isn't it? Let's, uh, let's join her and, uh, look for it. Nika. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is, she agrees with a twinkle in her eye. You've gained a little credibility. I must admit, I'm growing a little frustrated with the stage of the game. Hunting for the dragon statue is a certain thrill, but the real fun is stealing it. Ooh, so we can increase our peril with, I can't think of nothing more intriguing. Let's get to work, shall we? Or we can go, have you taken leave of your senses? No, I will have no part in burgling our host. And then steal it? Why on earth would you pos possess you to do that? Ha. <sighs> So she's a thief, perhaps? Um, hmm. You know what? We've not done anything to imperil ourselves. Maybe now's the time to do it. <laughs> I've found my first partner in crime, she laughs. Shall we find a statue? The two of you walk around together, appearing to be focused on idle small talk. In reality, you're both searching the venue high and low for your quarry. Near the back of the venue, you happen to find your prize, perched upon a little podium. A servant is dusting it very carefully. She eyes you suspiciously as you circle her, looking for some gap in her attention. You've gained a little peril. 
You've gained? You've just gained some peril. While perilous decisions can often get you what you want, if your peril bar fills up, then it means something unfortunate will happen to you. Be careful with how much you take on. I must say, I'm just surprised that he liked the statue I gave him so much. Your partner in crime whispers to you, If we want to steal that back, we'll need to distract this maid. Huh. Oh, she knows the person, the host here, and she gave him the statue. At least that's what she's telling us. Can I help you too, madams? The maid asked, polite but suspicious. Okay, so we can either get a credibility check. This choice requires a medium credibility challenge. I don't think we're going to pass that. Why, in fact, you can. There's been a terrible spill in Vestibule. Can you clean it up? Or we can bribe her, it looks like. How about I help you? Ten livres just to take a quick walk. And no, I don't think you can. I should be going. I think uh, we're not going to be able to stand up to a credibility challenge, so maybe what we do is we bribe her. I could be persuaded to take a quick walk, the maid replies with a greedy smile, quietly placing the offered coins in her waist pockets. You have spent ten livres. The maid hurries away from the both of you in the general direction of the vestibule, leaving the two of you to your quarry. Ah. That was amazing. You managed to be rid of her so naturally. I'll have to write down all of this. Your erstwhile companion hisses to you excitedly while she secrets the prize statue amongst her waist pockets under the folds of her skirt. You manage to reply with an appropriately enigmatic smile. Ah, by the way, I've heard from some of the other guests that you are a woman who trades in gossip and rumors. Last night, over dinner, I he heard something you might be interested in. Huh. She then proceeds to relate to you some interesting things about the bourgeoisie. You can't help but cock an eyebrow at some of the fine details of this gossip. If true, this might make quite the story for Pierre. You've gained a piece of shocking bourgeoisie gossip. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems our game is over. Hopefully, I'll see you again before I return to St. Petersburg. She leaves, and you're left wondering what you'll be able to do at this party with that was more fun than that. If nothing else, you're looking forward to finding out. I think that was all the activities that we could get. So we got both cheap church gossip and shocking bourgeoisie gossip. We gained six credibility, we lost ten lever, and we got some peril. Okay, March 27th. Alright, so there's a lot more to go here, but since we just finished this event, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here and uh, we'll just take up more of it the next time. I don't know if how well I'm doing or how poorly I'm doing, but um, if any of you have played this game and, you know, have some uh, ideas, you can place it in the comment uh, down below. Although, I will say that I am recording this ahead of time. I'm trying to get a bunch of recordings up um, or I'm trying to get a backlog of recordings so that I can edit and uh, schedule for release. So this will not be real time, but uh, I mean, if you've been enjoying this game, please let me know what your favorite parts of the game are. And uh, I think it if this game has multiple endings and multiple scenarios, perhaps I'll play this again and going in a different direction. So if you have tips for a second playthrough, that would also be appreciated, and we can see where we go from there. I hope that you guys have enjoyed, I hope that you will come back for more, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you everyone, and goodbye.